Today, we're making a zero clearance insert plate. What is a zero clearance insert plate? It is an insert that you make to your table saw to minimize any wood that can fall in besides the, your blade. This allows you to make finer cuts, less tear out, and just overall a bit cleaner cut. This is especially helpful if you've got a cheap contractor table saw. I've got Evolution, one of the new Evolution table saws, which is the name I can now not remember. It'll be somewhere on the screen. I've said zero clearance is applied enough now. Let's get right to it. I started by measuring out the size of the new insert plate by using the old insert plate as a guide. Next up, I'm pulling down the number to a bit more manageable size. Currently, I do not have a table or proper place for my table saw to stand yet, so it's standing on a flimsy plastic workbench, one of those portable ones. I also don't have a crosscut sled yet, as my whole shop is still new. Since the making of this video, I've bought a crosscut sled as well as a table saw table, or LT table. Let me know if you guys are keen to see those videos next. And I'm just transferring the lines we made earlier with the old insert blade. So I can easier uh, line it up with the blade and cut it to the correct size. We're about to see exactly why a zero clearance insert blade is amazing. Look at this piece of wood falling in. It was at this point that I realized I forgot one very important thing. My safety glasses. Speaking about safety, you'll notice I don't have my arriving knife installed. That is one of the big downsides of having a contractor table saw on the cheaper spectrum. The arriving knife that came with the table saw is so out of alignment that it catches the blade and it, it's actually more dangerous to have it installed currently than not. I'm quite impressed with this GRR ripper. It's a bit of a pain to set up for each cut, but this was still one of my first cuts with it, so it took me much longer to set it up than it should have, but it makes it a lot safer. Even without a driving knife, it helps prevent kickback because it's got a hook that goes behind the wood, so definitely recommend it. I don't have a bandsaw, so here I'm just uh, cutting it to thickness, roughly. I wanted to check how far we are off from the thickness, looking quite close. So I decided to head over to my planer and joined her. This uh, is probably going to upset some people that I'm using this and not more accessible tools like a hand plane. But I spent a few hundred hours planing stock, getting it squared up for my workbench that I built by hand only. On the kitchen floor, on the living room floor, on my knees. It, it was grueling. So, my wife and I spent <laughs> all our savings on my planner and jointer. It's not fancy, it's not flashy, it's not a big workshop machine, but it gets the job done and what would have taken me many hours by hand now takes minutes. And in this case, it would have actually been a lot better to clamp it down, use a hand plane, and take off small shavings to get it to the right size. But it's a brand new toy that I've waited for a very long time. So you can be sure I'm going to use it every opportunity I get. I'm just now comparing the, the thickness of the wood compared to the thickness of the old insert plate and decided it's time to convert my planer jointer to the thicknessing mode and get it down to thickness. One down sort of a common machine and a small workshop, you spend a lot of time turning to get it down to thickness. Today, still faster than hours with the hand plane. 
I find it funny how the human mind works. When I had no other option than to hand plane on my stock, I hated it. It was a, such a chore. Now that it's optional, I actually find myself enjoying it more than I did previously. I'm now just measuring out roughly where I need to route out the bottom of the insert plate to be able to fit on top of the metal bits that's there in the way and clamping it down on my <laughs> table saw tabletop because currently my workbench is used for storage which is uh, not fantastic but shelving is coming so let me just leave it there shelving is coming previously i used to work exclusively with hand tools so you'll notice that i might look inexperienced with a lot of my tools and you'll be correct i am we moved to this house just a while ago and I'm very lucky to have a basement where I can do my woodworking. It's not as big as some of the proper woodworking shops you see on YouTube, but it's a lot better than working on the kitchen floor as I did previously. But I am realizing just, just how much faster things go with power tools than it does with hand tools. My workbench took me about, I would say, 400 hours to build. I was quite confused here why it still wouldn't fit. Then I realized that the blade, it was getting in the way. It's time to draw a hole for your finger. You have to lift it out of the table saw. My, I don't have a draw currently, so I'm using an impact driver, which is definitely not recommended. It's an extremely ugly cut and it rips out a lot of the wood. Use a draw if you have one. My plan is to slowly upgrade my tools one by one. Next up is routing a groove for the plate to fit into. As the plate is protruding too, too far up and blocking the insert plate from going all the way down. I'm using sprues for making the insert plate. Using MDF or plywood would have been better and more stable in the long run. But it's all I had currently. Getting a bit frustrated here. So I give it a, a bit of a harder love tap. Make an indentation to see where it's still catching. Then I realized it's a small middle bit there in the bottom. I'm just gonna route that a little bit out. Now I'm hoping it will fit now. And look at that. The bottom bit fits first try. I still needed to go, go down with about a millimeter, so I decided to take it to the planer again because I can and get it down a little bit more and test with it. Overall, I was quite happy with that after taking down one more. And now it is time to get a piece of scrap wood. Clamp it down good on the table saw and turn the table saw on and hope nothing explodes and slowly bring the blade up to cut through the insert plate which is the final piece of this puzzle. I'm realizing here I should have worn my mask from cutting through MDF and there is a lot of sawdust popping up. Cleaning up the maze and look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Well, it's um, in a bumpy ride. I'm, if I had to remake it, I'll remake it after I've got a proper draw again. But I would take off less per pass on the on the planer to make sure it's properly flush. Because now there's like half a millimeter um, unevenness, but for now it's good enough. Yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, as you can already see, since the making of this video, um, I've made a table saw table, um, which allows me to have a wider cross-cutting capacity as long while well as a nice outfit table. 
full like tables full, um, which makes it a, a poor man's cabinet full, if you will. So stick around for that video coming up. Yeah, hope you enjoyed it, and uh, until next time.